In this video we will look at how we can rotate objects in 3D. I will first explain how it works and then we will implement this into our small 3D render engine that we built in the last video in Blender. Okay, so first I will quickly cover some basic vector mathematics. This is just 2D, which is easier than 3D. So here we have a point P defined with two coordinates, one to the right and two up. And we also have a vector V also defined with two coordinates, two to the right and one up. So what is the difference between a point and a vector? We call it a point if it's a specific location in this coordinate system. And a vector is basically just an offset, so we draw it as an arrow. It tells us to go two units in the x direction and one unit in the y direction. If we add a vector to a point, we basically offset the point by this vector. So in this case we go from the point P along the vector V and we reach point A. In vector mathematics we just write this as an addition. And here you can see how we calculate the coordinates of the point A. We just add the x coordinates and the y coordinates separately. So we get the coordinates 3, 3, which is here. We can also multiply the vector, which means that we scale it. So in this case we go from the point P along the vector V, but only half the length of vector V. And we can use any value instead of 0.5 to go anywhere along this line, so also negative values. And it's really useful to have a vector of length 1, because if we scale it by let's say 3.5, we can be sure that the scaled vector is of length 3.5. Okay, here we have a simple coordinate system. The two axes are defined with two vectors, and they have the length 1, so they are one unit in length. Now, if we want to draw the point P, we just go two units in the x direction and three units in the y direction. But we can also write this mathematically. We start at the origin at 0, 0. Then we go in the x direction by two units. So we scale this vector by two. And from this point, we go in the y direction by three units. Now, how can we rotate this point? We could say that we rotate the entire coordinate system. And because the point P is attached to this grid, it will also move with it. So let's rotate the coordinate system. Let's call this our local coordinate system and the one behind is our old global coordinate system. So when we rotate our point, we just pretend that these coordinates are local. Now the main question is, how do we get the coordinates of this point in our old global coordinate system? So we have the local coordinates and we want to get these global coordinates. Well, if we know our x and y vectors of this new rotated coordinate system, we can just use the same formula as before. We start at the origin, we go two units in the new x direction, so we scale it by a factor of two, and from there we go in the new y direction by three units. And this formula will return these numbers. So the only thing we need to figure out is what are the coordinates of our x and y axis. Okay, so let's implement this in Blender. And in the last video we set up this super simple 3D renderer. So let's go outside of this group. In 3D, we can define any coordinate system with four vectors or four points. By default, our origin is at 0, 0, and these are the coordinates for the three axes. So in Blender, let's define the three axes of our coordinate system. We can just add three combined x, y, z nodes. And we can just enter our default coordinate values to display our coordinate system in 3D, we will just use our point 3D node. So we just draw four points, the origin and our three axes. We just add them together. Let's change the first one to the origin. And these are our three axes. So we have our coordinate system here in 3D. And we can change our values here. Now we want to create a rotated coordinate system. So let's create a rotation around the z axis. So only the x and the y axis rotate around the origin, just as in the example from before. Let's add a value node. 
we want to change this value and rotate the coordinate system with it. So we need to convert this one number into two coordinates, x and y, these coordinates here of this x vector. We can do this with sine and cosine. The cosine of our angle, of our number, is the x coordinate and the sine is the y coordinate. In Blender we can just use a math node and set this to cosine and one with sine. And we can use them for our x and y coordinates. Now if you press shift and change this value, you can already see that it rotates on a circle. So this means that this vector is always has the length 1. Now we want to also have the y axis rotate with our x vector. So they are always perpendicular to each other. So we need to find the normal vector of our x axis. Because we are working in a 2D plane basically, this is very simple. We just have to swap the coordinates and we have to change the sign of one of them. So x becomes y and y becomes x. And let's invert the new x coordinate by just multiplying it by negative 1. Okay, perfect. Now, as you can see, if you want to make like a specific rotation, like 180 degrees, we have to enter some weird value here. And this is exactly pi. So a full rotation is 2 times pi. But we want to be able to enter degrees. So we can just uh, multiply by 2 pi. So now if we want to have a full rotation, we have to enter 1. So now we just need to divide it by 360. And if we enter, let's say, 45 degrees or 90 degrees, we get exactly what we want. We can group this and call this radiance to degree. So we can re reuse this later. So here we have our three axes of our coordinate system defined with three vectors. And now we want to rotate the points of our 3D model. So we can delete this. Let's just display our cube as we had before. And let's just copy these nodes and paste them in our points 3D function. So in the last video, here we did all the camera stuff. And here we get in the point coordinates. So if we want to rotate our point, we need to do this before we actually display it on our screen. And then if we have the final points, we render them with our camera here. If we look at the formula from before, we need to start at the origin. So let's make a combine XYZ node and leave it at 0, 0. And now we need to add our X vector, this one. But we need to scale it first by our X coordinate. We can just multiply the vector or we can also use scale. They basically do the same thing. So to get the x coordinate, we just have to separate this vector. And here we have the coordinates of our point. So we use x to scale the x axis. So to this, we add the y vector and we scale it by y. And then we do the same for, for our z axis. And this here is now our rotated point. Okay, now let's test if this all works. And it does. We can just group this. These are our inputs and this is the output. And we can save this node group and call it rotate set. Now we can only rotate this cube around the origin of our coordinate system. What if we want to rotate the cube around the center or some point somewhere else? So we want to define a pivot point around which we rotate it. We first move the entire cube to the origin. So the center of the cube is at the origin. Then we rotate it and then we move it back up there. And if you now rotate it, you can see we rotate around the center of the cube.
We can also do this inside of our node. And we can create a new input for our pivot point. Okay, so now we can define the pivot point here, point 0.5. Or we can move the point somewhere else. So now we rotate it around a point below here somewhere. So what does this node do? It takes in the coordinates of a point, it rotates it, and then it spits out the rotated coordinates again. Now if we want to rotate our cube also around the x and the y axis, we can just duplicate our node and press this button here. So these are no longer linked. So this is a completely different node. We can call this rotate y and also save it. So we can rotate it around Z, then Y, and then X. And we can always go back and change the other directions. So the order in which we apply these rotations does matter. Okay, so if we want to rotate our camera, we could also do this with these nodes. Here we did the transformation, so we need to rotate it afterwards. So let's pan the camera around Y. And this works great, but it's not really correct. For example, when we simulated the camera movement, we didn't move the camera forward. If we go forward, we just move the points closer to the camera. So it looks the same from the camera's perspective. So here we did the inverse. So we also need to do the inverse for the rotation. So if we go back to our example, we basically converted the local coordinates to global coordinates. Now, to do the opposite, we basically say that the local coordinate system is our camera's coordinate system, the camera space. So we basically have these global coordinates and we want to convert them back into the local coordinate system of our camera. And we can look at this from a purely geometric perspective. What we are looking for is this length here. In this case, it's two units. So we need to project this point perpendicular onto our axis to get the x-coordinate. And to get the y-coordinate, we have to project the point onto our y-axis. Uh, we can use the so-called dot product. What the dot product does is it takes in two vectors and it outputs a single number. So it, in this case, if the vector is normalized and we enter the point P and the vector V, which has to be normalized, so it has the length 1, we get back exactly this distance, so the orthogonal projection of P onto V, exactly what we need. In Blender that's very simple, we have the dot product here in the vector mass tool, so two vectors go in and one single number goes out. So let's just duplicate our rotate Y node and also copy it and let's call it rotate Y inverse. So we go from global coordinates to local coordinates. So let's go into this group. We can just remove all this. Here's our point and here's the output. To get the local X coordinate, we have to take our point and project it onto our X axis. And now we have all three coordinates, so we can combine it. And we can also remove this, because these coordinates are already final. Okay, now we can replace the rotation node with our inverse rotation nodes. And a good order for a camera 
is set y and x by rotating it around x we tilt the camera to look up and down around y we pan the camera and around z we roll the camera <laughs> 